Pruning, whether it's an apple orchard or a rose or anything, is really all the same. It's simply arranging, having everything fit in its place, nothing crossing over, and it should look nice, kind of thing. So you don't want something going, you know, crossing over um, different planes like it was. As stuff comes out, you don't want a branch coming up underneath here, going through the one above it. You want everything to just kind of have nice little layers. Okay, the first thing you do is you take out the obvious, where you have branches that cross over each other or big suckers heading straight up, things that clearly don't fit there. Get those out right away. That opens the tree up and it gives you perspective on how the thing looks and how it should fit, how it should finish. I think it's so interesting how, it how God really makes it so clear. If you can, if you can, can you focus this on this up here? You can see that at the collar, see, see it's almost like there's a line right there. You see that this, this circular line right there? It's almost like God's saying is cut to the line. Here's, here's the mark. You know, and if you'll cut right to that, then that collar will come over and starts to heal over and will fill in all those spaces and completely seal it. This is a real recent cut. You can see how it's just, it's very open. And then over, over time, as nature starts to, you know, it, because the collar's right here, it'll grow over that cut and heal. You can see that, how that's starting to fill in and up here, it's just about totally filled it. You can see there's just, just a slight hole, you know, where if you cut beyond that, the collar can't grow around it. And so then you have all this exposed wood that dies back and that's where the insects go into and create cavities, open areas in the trees where the trees are become weak and eventually break out. You can see a good example, there's a big cavity right down there. You know, it's all rotten, you know, where it was, it was opened up and the insects got into it. So if you cut really close right to the collar, the bark just grows right over it and totally heals it and it's, and it's a very beautiful finished product. This is a frustration about books is because they'll give you these pictures and you don't have anything that looks like that in your orchard. If you look, all my trees have different characteristics and they are different. So you just got to get very simple and just, you know, prune so everything you see. Nothing's crossing over here. Everything fits and it's opened up and you have good light exposure to it. It's it's um, not going to be too, too, too cluttered for the um, no fungus can develop because it's going to fill back in. What I love the way the Japanese describe this is you want to prune a tree so the bird can fly through and their mentality is it's going to fill back in so you want to create air spaces. But I love the way they describe pruning an apple. They say you got to prune an apple tree so you can throw a cat through it. And I hear where they're coming from because it gets so full and so dense that if you don't have it opened up you're going to get the, the apples won't ripen, they'll be small, you'll get fungal diseases, and by having this open, you can see you can throw all kinds of cats through this, there's all kinds of room, you know, kind of thing. And it's ideal, and if you look at the rest of them, by next September this will be totally filled in, and full of fruit, and it's fine. Well, pruning is uh, the most stimulating thing you can do. I love how, how God describes it in John 15, he says, His Father prunes the trees so they bear more fruit. I don't know if you ever notice things about God, but His ways are not our ways and his thoughts and ours, they're the most opposite. Because if I think about it, when I think of pruning a tree, I'm taking away from this tree, I'm limiting it. It doesn't make sense that it's going to make it produce more fruit, but the reality is it does. And there's nothing more stimulating to a tree than to cut it. When you cut it, roots develop, the tree is just invigorated. It's, just, it's the most powerful thing you can do to develop a tree is to pr properly prune it. There's nothing you can do better. And I love it because it just it doesn't make sense to the natural mind, but it's, it, it works. It's a, it's a truth. <laughs>